All right, he's back, people. So on this call here, this a uh, home warranty call, and the customer stated that uh, he thinks the compressor grounded. He had his HVAC guy come out, and he said that uh, the breaker was tripping, and that the his HVAC guy said the compressor is grounded. So that's where I'm at. Um, like I said, it's a warranty call, so if it is a grounded compressor, we'll have to submit the diagnosis to the warranty company and come out and uh, hopefully get it replaced. But uh, let's go and see if it is grounded or not. So I haven't done anything to it. I found the unit just like this. He said the breaker is tripped, so I do need to locate a breaker. See, they did pull the disconnect. All right. Like the horn is still on there. All right. So, I'd like to take this off. So he said the breaker is tripped. So we're gonna need to locate the breaker. Yep. So we do have a trip breaker right here. You can see it's in the middle. So that breaker is trip. I'm gonna go ahead and reset it because the plug is out the disconnect. So we're good. Trip breaker. All right, so we located our breaker. Now we should have power to this disconnect now. So sometimes you can have a wire touching that could trip the breaker. Oh yeah, I forgot too. He said that uh, that would kind of question me because uh, he said that his technician replaced the capacitor when the breaker was tripping. Whenever I have a uh, trip breaker, I don't go for the capacitor. But anyway, he said he replaced the capacitor and it still tripped the breaker. So I think I'm gonna put this capacitor back. All right, so it's not calling for cool. So just gotta remember what's what. All right, so we know that this is common because it's coming from the contactor. It's the four prong. Probably need to check this cap also though. Michael Farrett. Like I say, I'm no hurry, folks. You know, some people want to come in and say, what's taking so long to troubleshoot a compressor? We ain't in no hurry. All right, so this common and the cap. Let's see what we get. Rated for 70. Yeah, I'm getting 71. I don't know why you try to replace this. The fan. 10. 71 by 10, that's good. Let's stick that back down in here. I really do need to check too. Okay. Work behind some people you want to double check. You can bypass a leg. Though. 
need to make sure. Okay, this fan right here, yeah, this purple right here is coming from the compressor, so it's gonna be on the, the three prong. All right, that's my 70 right there. Now this is the fan. So since this is common, I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be common too. So we can either put this on our contactor or our capacitor. Uh, put it on a capacitor. This brown is gonna go on a two terminal on a capacitor. This black is gonna go on our contact on the black side, L1. All right. Now. Since it is tripping the brake, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check out the compressor. All right, so what I wanna really do is I'm just gonna take that uh, harness off the unit and, and, and reset it. If it trips the breaker, if I take this harness off, and it fit, I can check it for ground right now if I want to, but if I uh, put this in, if it trips the breaker, oh, fan should kick on. If it trips the breaker, though, it could be a bad fan. Inserted the breaker. I'm gonna check see if we got power now to the unit. As you can see, I got 240 to my unit. We're gonna push in this contact right here. I'm gonna save the glasses. I'm gonna push in this contact and see what happens. All right, so we got fan. Breaker did not trip, so that ruled out pretty much everything but the harness. From the compressor harness to the compressor. So let's just check this compressor for ground. All right, All right so pull it out, disconnect. Flip that over. Remember, from anything for ground, so we want to uh, get our common. Some, sometimes I got two red leaves, some people have a black lead, but your common. Get you a good connection to ground. On one of your copper lines. So what I'm doing is just digging in there, scratching real good. Scratch that, make it shiny. And it's gonna go from leg to leg. It should not get a beat. We go from leg to leg. It should not beat. Alright. Alright, we're on Michael Ferris. We're gonna put that on ohms or continuity. So I'm getting open. 
Let's see if we got an open line between terms. Now we should get a beat. Okay. Sometimes the compressor be locked up, but on this meter right here, I can go get a stronger meter and see if we can find anything. But from ground, I'm not getting anything. All right. But a compressor could be locked up anything. We're gonna see why it's over amping though. All right. I may go get a uh, mega. Also, let's check this wire harness. Now it's kind of moist and real wet up in here. Probably get another meter and uh, put some gauges on here. Twenty-six. Right. But I'm just looking at the core. Core pretty dirty. If you have high pressure, see that? That's why I kind of suspicious about this technician though, because he changed the capacitor. Change the capacitor. Unit tripping brake. Yeah, you don't really normally change the capacitor when the unit tripping the brake. So. I don't know if he had a real technician or a family member. Let me see here though. Keep an OL if it's grounded. Yeah, OL. 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 I'm not getting anything. Installation test. Pull up. So five hundred volts. Yeah. So they're compressing. It, it failed the installation test. As you can see, I'm putting 550, I'm going 26. That should be 550 also on that leg right there. Let's do another one. Yeah, 26, yeah, compressor no good. All right, yeah, so this is a bad compressor. All right, 
So if I was getting 550 right now, where it says 26 at, it'll be a good compressor, but I'm only getting 26 and we putting 550 to it. Let's go, uh, let's do it, 100 boat. Yeah. And it's a 220 system, so I'm only getting, I do 250. See, 26. Other so compressor, no good. Ah, so I've got it open. Let's see, it's a 42. Like I said, they need a maintenance too, but. Like I said, I can show y'all, I'm probably going to trip the breaker. Let me see. Let's see what it do. I'm gonna turn it off on the thermostat this time though. Go ahead and take a picture of the compressor while I got it. So I'm going to turn it on at the thermostat. Alright. I guarantee you that the cores would, uh, dirty core probably would kill this compressor. You can tell when it rained, it'd probably be a lot dusty back here. That fan is sucking in all that dirt. All right, folks, so we're gonna work on uh, getting this unit repaired or replaced. As always, thanks for watching. On this one right here, we got a bad compressor, failed the insulation test. So we're gonna see what they're gonna do. Let's see if we're gonna put a new compressor up in here or just uh, get a new condenser. See how old it is. Look like besides the maintenance, 2014, less than 10 years old. Yeah. Let's see what we can do for them. I got window units for the time being. Alright folks, so it is a scorcher today, but I'm back to change that compressor out. Got the compressor right here. All right, folks, so I'm back to change that compressor, but uh, it is a scorcher today, and I would have ran several service calls, so I don't know how much I'm a film today, but uh, pretty good started. It's the middle of the day, and I'm just starting. I usually don't start a compressor change out in the middle of the day like this, but they got an infant, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it taken care of. I 
the first time using this uh my gauges these look nice i want to see how far this wireless go right here I know the mobile app. I'm gonna try it with the mobile app also. One day anyway. Every time, but he's compressed. Good time to put a low pressure switch on here. South LA Tech.
flowing nitrogen also. Nitrogen police, y'all don't know if I'm flowing nitrogen or not. All we, all we need to do is show you the bottle. Some guys will be showing you the bottle. You swept them down, they flowing nitrogen. All right, so let's get this filter dry out of here. I'd rather cut this. I did let you know it's hot out here today. I had this uh, thermometer on this condenser. It read 144 degrees. But uh, it's sun on the back of my neck. I know it's about 100. Good 130 sun. All right, folks. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out here. If I can find my cutters. Just had them. Here we go. Camera getting too hot. GoPro, y'all gotta do something about your, your camera getting hot. There's ain't no action going on. Man, I'm gonna cut this this short. piece of copper they got here. Yeah, it's uh, beat down on the back of your neck. Gotta be careful out here, folks. Stay hydrated. I used to do jobs like this in the morning, but like I say, they... Like I said, they got a window, you know, they got an infant. And without ass on Friday, the whole weekend. towards the evaporator coil. Insulation trying to
with some nitro. That's 100 PSI. I'm going to go around and get some soap bubbles and we're going to leave it like that. I'm pretty sure. I would have heard it leak. I only got four wells. One, two, three, four. That's it. Alright. <clears throat> Alright. So while I pull a vacuum, I want to show you uh, that this meter right here, remember on that bag compressor, I think I was getting like 26 volts when I was applying 520 So it'll let me know the insulation was bad on that compressor um, Let's see here. So we're gonna do the same thing with this and we're gonna apply 525 volts and you'll see that I'm getting 525 volts In this corner down here with this compressor here. This meter had a little test read here so we can use one hand And we're gonna go to one terminal and I'm gonna put that 525 on there that's 250 right there, but it should even get the whole 250. You can see that, see? 275 and it's getting 263, so that's good. That's due to 500 this time, so we're gonna go to the range. If I had a 460 volt, I'll, I'll uh, apply 1000. And since we 208, I'm gonna do 500. Terminal. All right, as you can see, I'm getting 523. 523. Remember that last now we're getting like, I think it was 20-something. All right, so that's 550. We've got 560. All right, so that let me know that compressor bag. Let's go to this compressor while we got it out. We can go ahead and check it too. Check it again. All right. That's why this meter here can find any short is undefeated. Any ground. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. 550, I'm gonna go to this terminal right here. But 552, you see, I'm only getting 46. Bad compressor, let's do another one. I'm gonna do this terminal right here. Apply voltage. Uh, 50, I'm on again 45. As you can see, you see continuity right here to get it. Well, I had to put my other lead on here. Yeah, I'll watch when we go here. See, it's not showing ground. Alright, folks, so the scale did power off, but uh, <clears throat> it saved the memory, so I guess I got eight pounds out of there. So, we already got this uh, purge. Show you again. Right. We're gonna open our liquid line up. 
I can. Okay. Well, it's already open. Let me close the suction. Close the suction. Got our bathroom closed. And just open this. There we go. Let that get all the way down to zero. What we got, what we got. Alright. Put us a new contact on here, folks. This was not a ground out, but whenever you place a compressor, you want to replace your contact. Good practice. thermostat make sure we have all uh, there we go folks we got us a compressor out here I hear it alright make sure we ain't over there So right now just looking for amps. So we're rated for 21. Well below that. Uh, Alright, there go our pressure probably about 130 over uh, about 380 something. Very hot out here. Camera getting hot. I'm gonna go ahead and end this one. As always, y'all, thanks for watching. That's compressor change out. We out. WWH back. Hey, can I go ahead and get the pavement before I leave? What's that? Can you go ahead and pay it before I leave? It's on my phone, I'll help you real good. Yeah, just go ahead, uh, can you get it before I leave? It just take five minutes. Yeah, it will. Okay. Did y'all take payment plans? No, not for that much. It has to be over $400. I mean, you don't, you don't have it to pay it because you agreed to the non-covered cost. Okay, but y'all getting paid from the whole warranty company, right? But I need, I need, we also need the non covered cost that you agreed to. You get what I'm saying, though? You're getting paid from the, you but, said you need to get every penny you can, every yeah. dollar you can. Yeah. And you're getting paid from the home warranty company. Right. And then you're also charging me for disposal charge. Right, right, right. I'm fine recharging but, but, it. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I'll leave that on. I took care of cleaning myself because I got to save every dollar I can. I'm just saying, can, can, you, can you go ahead and make a payment before I leave? What's that? Because you agreed to the non covered cost. Cause, okay, cause now, cause, cause now it, it seems like you don't want to pay it though. And now it seems like for, if I leave, you might not pay my money. If you're scared about me not paying, then you can just leave the old compressor and I'll pay you for the charge. No, no it, it's not about that, sir. Because you're already getting a heavy discount from your warranty company. But, but we're not going to get into that kind of much. Can you just go to your phone and uh, make a payment before I leave? I said I'll get to it. I'm in the middle of something right now. All right. Well, I'll just wait here until you until you finish then. Okay. Because I don't want to get to the point where we have to pull the compressor back out. <laughs> All right. Yeah.
Yeah. But how long do you think you would be? Well, I gotta rewire this, plug it in, and try to figure this out. So. But how long do you think you would be? I ain't got no time. All right. When you pay my money, man, I'll turn it back on. Real, I ain't some degrees out here. I can't get my money. Dang. All right, go ahead and pay me the invoice. You'll get your air. So I got this guy uh, agreed to a non-cover non cost. He don't want, want to pay me. All right, it's back to you. So I'm editing this video. I'm going to wrap it up. I did pull the disconnect. Got back to my truck. They paid the invoice uh, immediately after that. But quick history. Day one, I diagnosed the compressor. Told the guy that he's going to need the coils clean. He said that he would do it because I told him what I charged to clean the car. He said he'll do it. I mean, actually, he said he'll get his HVAC uh, people to do it, his HVAC company to do it for him, which is fine. He ended up doing it, did a good job, which is fine. Uh, now, he agreed to a non covered cost. The warranty company I always contact the homeowner once they agree to the non covered cost which I guess is his plan. Some plans, keep in mind, you can, uh, the one to come take care of everything. So the, so he, they can't discuss that with they want the company. If they don't want to pay anything, just pay the deductible. But whatever tier he owned, he had to pay for the disposal. And it was another charge that he had to pay for, which we call disposable or haul away. Anyway, he agreed to that. Uh, Keep in mind also, warranty companies, whenever you have a deductible, we're supposed to get that deductible up front before we um, do any kind of work. So when I diagnosed compressor, I didn't get, I didn't, because a lot of times I don't, I don't require, but we're supposed to get the deductible and the non covered costs up front before we do any kind of work. Diagnosed compressor. When I diagnose it, I send it, uh, send this customer and usually send all my customers a duck for after I do the diagnosis. 
send it to the phone, email, maybe cast a check. So I did that. So, uh, after I did my diagnosis, submitted everything to the warranty company. I uh, immediately after that, I sent the invoice to the, to this customer for the deductible. A couple of days later, they paid the deductible because it took like I think uh, two days for the uh, compressor to get approved or whatever. And keep in mind, also I, I did the job late in the e evening. I, I don't want to ramble too much about this, but I went out of my way to kind of help this customer out. But he agreed to the non-cover costs. The warranty company would not uh, authorize the replacement of the, or, or the repairs of the unit until the customer agreed to the non-cover costs. So the customer called me a couple of times and uh, after I submit the diagnosis, because I told him when I did submit the diagnosis, it's kind of without my hand, uh, the one to come have to order the compressor. Once they order the compressor, I get an email that is in the wheel call and I go pick it up. I never got that email or anything. He called me a couple of times. I said, hey, you got to call your warranty company, get them, get them on it or whatever. So, uh, and I knew where the warranty company was ordering the compressor from. So long story short, I never got the email, but I was finishing up a couple of jobs that day. I said, let me go ahead and call the place that they ordered the compressor from. And I did. Uh, anyway, I, I did call early that morning and the, and the warranty company never did uh, submit the diagnosis or whatever. So the warranty company did call me early that day and asked about a contact, not the compressor. I told them what kind of contact I needed or whatever. So they uh, they said, okay, I never did get the email about the wheel call. So I say, let me go ahead and go by the supply house uh, real quick because I'll pass by and see that they submit the order, uh, order for the compressor, which they did. I never did get the email. I was just doing that to kind of my heart. I'm driving by, let me stop by. They were like, yep, yep, Mr. Washington, that compressor is in from the warranty company or whatever. So I went on to pick that up that evening and uh called a homeowner and and went on ahead and installed a compressor because i could have been i could have waited uh i don't remember exactly what day i think it was friday i don't remember exactly what day it was but it, if it was over the weekend or something like that it still could have been a, definitely in the next day before i would have got the email so anyway uh never did get the email still went by the supply house picked the compressor up and uh Contacted the homeowner, installed it. When I got there, I didn't get a thank you. How you doing? Which is fine. Do you need a glass of water? I know it's high. I appreciate it. Which is cool. I'm, I'm not expecting any, any of that. You don't have to say hi anything to me. It's, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? But the people that do say hi, offer you a glass of water, man, must appreciate it, especially when it's hot out there. And your uh, technician will go the extra mile, you know what I'm saying, if you do uh, offer them things like that. But like I say that that's neither here or there. So uh, anyway, installed the compressor, whatever. Like I say, and even when I got back with the compressor, I'm supposed to get the non-cover cost up front before I do any work. But that's what the homeowner agrees to. But I, you know, what I'm saying it's no no biggie. I, I went on uh, went on did the work or whatever. So uh, so what you see in, in the video, uh, the homeowner right I think right before that. He was saying that he can throw away, you know, the compressor or whatever. And now warranty companies, they don't pay us what I normally charge a customer if they were paying out of pocket. And, and keep in mind, that's cool because I don't have to market that customer. So I get the discount. I wouldn't have this customer without the warranty company. So that agreed rate that I have with the one to come out fine with, but uh, the stuff like disposable costs and that is EPA guidelines, we do charge that in line items to try to kind of you know uh, recoup something. Even the, even the customer got to pay for it or the warrant company got to pay for it or point blank because we do have to get rid of the equipment or whatever or whatever the non cover cost is. Some some people have non cover costs. It don't cover drain lines, duct work, stuff like that outside the unit. Some plans it cover everything, depending on what plan you have. Like I said, that's not neither here or there, but customer agreed to the non cover cost. When we were having that conversation, I was still going to go ahead and 
you know, put the compressor in the truck, go ahead and haul away and send the customer invoice via email or text. But he got to saying that uh, why do he have to pay the haul away fee and this and that? And he trying to save as much money as he can. That's why he cleaned the condenser coil, uh, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much where we at. So I, I felt that he was he, he wasn't going to either pay me all my money or he wasn't going to pay me my money. I was on the safe side. I rather just go ahead and just pay me my money now. Like I said, I should have got got the money before I even started, but I feel this this was going to be controversial. Controversial. It was going to be either a few days later before I got all my money, or he was going to try to contact the one to come and try to dispute something. So, uh, long story short, I did pull the disconnect. I wouldn't advise anybody to do that, but uh, I mean, I did not leave the property and come back. So, I felt that it was best for me if I was going to uh, do something like that, just go ahead and do it, you know, without leaving the property and coming back. like some premeditated or something like that so but i mean it is what it is uh like i said i don't like to be controversial or or but sometimes you gotta take it there i mean it is what it is so uh but everybody thanks for watching i saw i'm dragging this for on, on for so long but uh go ahead and get your money up front in the customer paper uh, uh agree to a non-cover cost go ahead and uh, get your get your money up front or get a credit card on file that's, or something like that so uh but anyway thanks for watching